Ladies and gentlemen, it's interesting that in both their opening and their rebuttal closing that you heard Mr. Depp's attorneys address none of Ms. Heard's witnesses, none of Ms. Heard's witnesses. They listed their own who didn't see, who, who are on his payroll, weren't there behind closed doors with him, but they didn't address any of the witnesses. For example, Josh Drew, Rocky Pennington, Liz Mars, who were all there on May 21st, Melanie Iglesias, who covered Ms. Heard's bruises. They say that no one showed up for her. No one showed up for her, but then they say that these people aren't friends anymore. If they're not friends anymore, then why would they be doing what they would suggest are lying for her? Why would they be corroborating everything that she says? If the, it's this simple. If you believe that Depp was abusive to Amber one time ever in any of the various forms of abuse, not only physical, verbal, emotional, psychological, sexual, any of the ways of abuse, then your job is very easy. And you can not only deny Mr. Depp's claim, but you can find for Amber on her counterclaim. And it's interesting that Ms. Vasquez just changed their theory after six weeks. She said, oh, well, domestic abuse just means physical abuse. It's not what Mr. Depp said. It's not what Dr. Curry said. It's not what Dr. Hughes said. It's not what you know to be true. You know that the evidence that you've seen constitutes all sorts of abuse. And there's a reason that they're running as fast as they can from those sorts of abuse because they know that he did it. Now, the suggestion that Amber's abuse allegations are a hoax is vicious and vile. Mr. Depp can say whatever he wants now, but he can't say, change the evidence that you've seen at the trial. The evidence shows that Ms. Heard did not commit abuse hoaxes, not about sexual violence, not about May 21st, 2016, and certainly not about Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman's catch-all, all-purpose statement that Ms. Heard's abuse hoax, which suggests that every one of her allegations are false, that that's coming to an end. The evidence shows she did not commit any of those hoaxes. The evidence shows that she was abused exactly how not only she, but her witnesses supporting her claims say that she was. And their witnesses, even, who claim that Mr. Depp abused her. Ms. Vasquez talked about actual malice. She says, because Mr. Waldman was acting as Mr. Depp's agent, you have to look at Mr. Waldman. They're standing in the shoes of one another. And as Mr. Depp's agent, Mr. Depp's malice is Mr. Waldman's malice. Mr. Depp's Waldman malice is Mr. Waldman's malice. He acted with actual malice when he made these statements. Now, after years and years of Mr. Depp controlling the roles that Ms. Heard took, Ms. Heard had the biggest hit of her career three months before she was sued. She had withstood Mr. Depp's attempt to have her fired from Aquaman and his own jealousy as his career went down the drain before her op-ed for reasons having nothing to do with Ms. Heard. But once the lawsuit against Ms. Heard was filed, his campaign that he promised to destroy her entered a new phase. And then it reached a crescendo when Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman decided to meet with the Daily Mail together and decide to plant statements that were defamatory of Ms. Heard in the spring of 2020, leading up to the UK trial. You've heard Amber and her agent, Jessica Kovacevic, talk about the impact to Amber's career. She can't get hired because of the negative treatment she gets. Studios like her, co-stars like her, she tests well, but she can't get opportunities because of the negativity associated with Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman. You heard Amber Heard on the stand yesterday telling you exactly what she has experienced as a result of Mr. Depp's promise to bring her global humiliation. That promise, to, to paraphrase Catherine Arnold, Ms. Heard's damages expert, that promise was a spark. And that promise he kept because he had told her again and again, the only way out of this is death. And when she chose a different path out of it, he decided to make that promise. He decided to throw that spark. And when Mr. Waldman became involved, that spark became a forest fire. That forest fire has continued to this day. We ask, ladies and gentlemen, that you hold 
Mr. Depp accountable for his actions. Stand up for victims of domestic abuse everywhere who suffer in silence. Stand up for the freedom of speech, the freedom to speak about your life that the First Amendment protects. Give Amber Heard her voice back. Give Amber Heard her life back. Thank you so much for your service on this jury. Thank you, Mr. Rottenborn. Members of the jury, this is an important case to both the plaintiff and the defendant. In order to reach a verdict, each of you must agree on that verdict. In other words,